Mike Tyson is not the sort of person we generally interview on the show. He's not a political figure. He's not still boxing. Why did we talk to him? Well, because Mike Tyson has spent almost 40 years at the very pinnacle of American society. And then at the very bottom, he went to prison at one point. He's seen everything. And a lot of people who lead lives like that are destroyed by them. They become numb and insensible, particularly if they're boxers. But a rare few become wise and fascinating and able to communicate what they've learned. And Tyson is definitely in that category. So for a brand new episode of Tucker Carlson today, we sat down with Tyson and we began by asking him, what was it like growing up? Here's part of that. I'm not shaming my, I'm really proud of my childhood. Yep. Yeah. But no advantages. Yeah, my disadvantage was my advantage. What do you mean? Um, my adversity yeah. inspired me to be more than what I truly was. I believe that. So you are inspired by Ali, then you go to a different reform school, yes. and they have a former fighter there who trains you. Is that the point when you realize you're going to do this for a living? Yeah, but this is what since when I came there, I was in another facility on that campus, and I believe I... I don't want to say I stabbed somebody, but I had an altercation with somebody. So I, I came and he met me. I had handcuffs and I'm rearrested and I was a mess. And so when I was, when the guys were talking to me, because they wanted, they, they said, well, you're not a bad guy because you did that. So we talked. He said, if we have an ex fighter, Bobby Stewart, you need to meet him. He'll probably get you in shape. And I said, well, I would love to meet him. I met Muhammad Ali. I seen Muhammad Ali once. And then this guy knocks on my door. I heard you want to talk to him. What do you want? I said, I, I want to be a fighter. He said, everybody wants to be a fighter. You show me you want to be a fighter. Let's just see how your conduct is. And I went from being a really jerky, nasty guy to becoming an ace dude. Really? Yeah. And then, um, and then he started training me. What was it about that? Is the discipline that he imposed? Yes. I wanted to be a fighter so bad. If you hadn't become a professional boxer, what would you have done? There's no doubt. That was going to be that. Yeah. You knew you were going to be a, at what age? Um, 13. 14. And four years later, you were? Uh, um, seven years later. Seven years later. So when did you meet Customato? When I was 12. Um, I was at the facility, and the guy drove me to meet him. Because well, I made my levels in there. I was a trustee now. Yes. I was a good kid, a trustee. So I, I, can, go to get, um, I can get off campus and go visit them. What, what was he like? Total disciplinarian. Yeah. Take no. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I need. Not a weak. Not a weak no, man. No, no signs of weakness. Yeah. No signs of weakness. If you didn't conduct yourself the way he conducted yourself, you're not Italian. He's gonna tell you what Italian is. If you, if he saw like, what are those guys? Paulie Shaw. What's the Paulie name? The Italian guys. The Jersey Shore guys. Yeah. They're not Italian. I said, cuss. They're Italian. They are not Italian. He would say something like that. If you don't conduct yourself, oh, Italian only conduct themselves like this. He's not Italian. He was he was that kind of guy. Amazing. So when nothing what was playful? <laughs> nothing playful. <laughs> nothing <about> playful. <laughs> we had to tease him, talk behind his back. There's nothing playful about him. And you liked that? Hey, you know what? I loved it. Someone cared about me. Yeah. And if anybody says something to me, I punch him in the face, attack him. So, so interesting. <laughs> because most teenage you don't say boys. nothing about me. They attack you physically. Were you ever afraid? I was always afraid of him. I'm afraid of him now. Like <laughs> that. He made sure you were afraid of him. And you liked that. Listen, we, had, we were on the third floor, right? And we're talking crap. Yeah, we're talking about girls and stuff. And then we hear eh, him. He's coming up there and everybody stopped talking. And then he comes and said, hey. I heard everybody dance, laughing from the first floor. I come up here and not laugh. I want to know what's funny. I want to laugh too. Then <laughs> nothing because we were just talking. You know, because he was just on our back. Because we, we told him we were talking about girls. That's what you do. Girls are nothing on your mind. You have to get girls off your mind. How are you going to be champion just thinking about girls? Okay? So we never told him what we think about. No, because we're not doing nothing. We're just up here talking. Nothing. Talking about what? I want to know. You guys are all laughing. The whole house is up in the chairs laughing. I want to know. I come and say, you stop laughing. Why? And, you know, the guy, he's scared to death to say anything. <laughs> But I mean, you were like twice as big as him. No, nope. well, that don't mean nothing. He had, he had the, he had the, um, he had the system of intimidation down like a science. <laughs> really?
Totally. He had it down to a science. How? What were his methods? Not talking. <laughs> you know, he, um, God language is language without making talk without making sounds. Yeah. So you understand if he's mad or not. Look at that. Oh, look at me. I'm just a little boy. So happy to be with this guy. Look how big I am at 14. You were 14 then? Yeah, look how big I am. Yeah, you're enormous. <laughs> Baby Huey. So did he, and I, pardon my bad memory, did he live to see you become... No, he died a year before. Not even, even less than a year. Really? Eight, nine months, something like that. And he, by that point, I think was your guardian, right? Yeah, my mother signed me over to him before she died. How old were you when she died? 16. 16. So he wasn't just your coach, he was your mentor and your leader. Yeah, if I didn't make him fight, I still had to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't go there. I still had to, maybe I had to get a job, but I still had to be there. Did you live with him? Yeah, I think I was thir four, 13. You lived at his house? Yeah. That's so different. Hey, listen. Anytime I saw a white guy was a judge, a cop, or he was a victim. And I come to this guy's house, and this guy showed me love, and, um, wow, love is powerful. One of the reasons I wanted to interview you is because you're the author of one of my favorite quotes ever in English, which is, everybody's got a plan till he gets hit in the face. A hundred percent. Because people now, especially now, no one's going to fight. People like talking now. They get on the stage, they get on YouTube, and they start talking. Yeah. And that's why some people, some people are not made for handling, handling criticism. They're just not made for, some people go off the deep end if you criticize them. Yes. You, some people just can't handle it. And some of the power, most powerful people in the world, they just can't handle it. They're not mature enough to handle criticism. Were, have you gotten better at handling criticism as, you, as you've gotten older? Yes, but mostly, um, yeah, but it's still, it can, get, it can get even better. Sometimes I get, sometimes I get in my head and think I'm somebody. And then I'm easily offended. But when I know I'm nobody, I could never be offended. <laughs> Boy, is that a deep insight. Sometimes I get in my head that I'm somebody and I'm easily offended, and then I remind myself I'm nobody and I'm not offended. Exactly, 100%. So if you, you know, if you're that well known and everywhere you go, people are sucking up to you and taking pictures with you, how do you remind yourself, as you said, that actually I'm nobody? Well, I don't know. God, God did this. I asked for this, and this is what he gave me. It's not like someone gave me something I didn't um, acquire. I wanted this life, I prayed for this life, and I received it. When I think I'm somebody, I'm offended. When I remember I'm nobody, I'm not. There's a lot more in that vein. Tomorrow Tyson talks about his faith and his love of animals, really one of the most remarkable conversations we've ever had. And then he describes how he really felt about the men he fought in the ring over the years. And we'll just give you a preview. I wanted to kill them. <laughs> but you knew that. Stay tuned for that. Absolutely worth watching. So, like a lot of people, we always thought that Twitter was a social media site. Then why were all these Intel agents working for Twitter? A lot of them. Could it be that Twitter was actually a propaganda tool and an intelligence gathering operation for different governments? Totally possible. More on that next.